It's Monday, August 9th, and this is now on H&N. The unvaccinated will have to be subjected to certain requirements and restrictions. New today, we've learned the Pentagon will require members of the U.S. military to get the vaccine. Uh, each winner will receive a $400 McDonald's Arch card. And this just in, the state announces a new incentive for those who are not yet vaccinated. A broken water main in East Oahu causes traffic delays, water outages, and now school closures. Every bit of warming that we can avoid will be beneficial to us. These stories plus code red. UN scientists warn of worsening global warming. Details coming up on This Is Now. We begin with this new video into our newsroom and for our podcast listeners, I'll do my best to describe it to you. Another sign waving rally was held today fronting the state and county office buildings in Wailuku on the Valley Isle. Many rallying are against mandatory vaccinations, holding signs saying we want choice and freedom over fear. Our Chelsea Davis is at the protest today gathering interviews and information and we'll have much more on this story on later editions of H&N. And we also just got this picture in from downtown at Honolulu Hale, a protest going on there as well. We have a crew at the scene. We'll have much more on that protest as well later on today. Meanwhile, Governor Ige just talked to the Star Advertiser. He was asked about the potential of any further restrictions. It's really uh, gatherings that uh, spread the virus. So private gatherings, uh, in homes, uh, so uh, a reduction in uh, the number of people who can gather both indoors and outdoors is definitely one area that we're looking at. You know, and we're we're trying to make sure uh, we want to be smart about how we um, can be focused on the behavior that is uh, spreading the virus, uh, the behavior that's more risky, uh, and um, that we're seeing uh, more cases in. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for watching. This is now Ashley and Jonathan here. Let's get you those latest numbers from the State Department of Health. DOH is reporting 437 new cases today, along with one more death. The breakdown by island shows 67 cases on the Big Island, 52 on Maui, 4 on Molokai, 16 on Kauai. Oahu has 293, and out of state, we have five people diagnosed. Officials say 225 people are now hospitalized. Meanwhile, the Pentagon says it will require members of the U.S. military to get the COVID-19 vaccine. Scene. Here's Pentagon Press Secretary John Kirby with new details just into our newsroom. You'll make the request for the waiver by mid-September. I've seen some reporting out there that that means that all the troops have to be vaccinated by mid-September. That's not accurate. He'll make the request by mid-September unless or until FDA licensure occurs before that time, at which point the secretary has the authority he needs upon FDA licensure to issue, to make uh, whatever vaccine is then given that license mandatory. So I just want to clear that up. That's point number one. Point number two, in the meantime, two things are going to happen. One, the services are going to be tasked to come back to the secretary with implementation plans for how they're going to get this moving. And there is not probably a lot of time between now, certainly not a lot of time between now and mid-September. Uh, but if FDA uh, licensure comes sooner than that, and there's press reporting to suggest that the Pfizer vaccine will be perhaps even um, uh, uh, completely approved by the end of this month. So the services have a, a, a fair but limited amount of time to come back to the secretary with uh, their implementation plans for how they would go about uh, mandatory vaccines for all their personnel. We have to understand, of course, that they have their own deployment schedules, their own manning constructs, their own differences in, in unvaccinated numbers. Uh, and so we're going to be respectful of that. The second thing that will happen in the meantime uh, is that we are going to be developing policies to comply with the president's direction that the unvaccinated will have to be subjected to certain requirements and restrictions. I don't have the details for all that today. Uh, uh, we're working hard on what will be a policy directive to come in the coming days uh, that will make it clear what those requirements and restrictions 
are and how they apply to everybody in the DOD workforce, including uniformed personnel. Other developing military news to talk about today at noon as U.S. troops finalize their plans for withdrawing from Afghanistan after 20 years of combat. Taliban fighters are gaining ground, seizing control of several key cities over the weekend. We've got Kelly Kobiea with the latest developments in Kabul. A dangerous new phase in the fight for Afghanistan. The Taliban is now moving in on cities, capturing Kunduz Sunday, home to nearly 300,000. One local telling NBC News it was total chaos. The police headquarters, shown in this Taliban propaganda video unverified by NBC News, apparently abandoned a fleet of trucks left behind. It's yet another blow to the country's crumbling security forces, who've lost control of at least five cities since Friday. Zaranj in the southeast, where some locals greeted the Taliban with cheers. And Shaburgan in the north. A social media video showed Taliban fighters stocking up on police weapons in a police truck. The speed of the Taliban advance as U.S. troops withdraw ahead of a September deadline has shocked the West. The war in Afghanistan has entered a new, deadlier and more destructive phase. The U.S. providing some air support, but little else. Most U.S. troops and contractors who helped to keep Afghanistan's jets and other hardware working are now gone. In Kabul, fear is spreading. The Taliban assassinated another government official Friday, and this morning, a car bomb attack in the city. Thousands of Afghans are fleeing their homes and desperate to leave the country. Many now worried the new regime will impose more restrictions on women. Parents terrified their daughters will be taken to be married off to Taliban fighters. Abdul Rashid Shiraz was an interpreter for the Navy SEALs for five years. He's one of more than 80,000 applying for a special immigrant visa designed to help Afghans who worked with U.S. troops. They, they can kill us today, they can kill us tomorrow, and they will not just kill me, they will ki kill my, ki my kids too, you know. With the Taliban advancing, many here worry time is running out. On Sunday, the State Department condemned this latest Taliban offensive and is trying to pressure the group to negotiate a peace deal. Kelly Kobieya, NBC News, Kabul, Afghanistan. New at noon, the High Got Vaccinated campaign just announced its next round of prizes, but it's designed only for people who haven't gotten their shots yet. You could win if you're one of the next 10,000 people to get vaccinated. Um, there are some specific rules for this contest, and you'll see the milestones that uh, we're going to be announcing prize winners. Um, everybody that, that enters the uh, Vax to Max contest will automatically be entered into the High Got Vaccinated Hanaho round. Um, contest as well. So you only need to enter once if you're recently vaccinated. Um, if um, you go to the highgotvaccinated.com and you weren't recently vaccinated, but you still wanted to enter for the Hanaho round, you can do that too. And those new prizes that were just announced include $400 arch cards to McDonald's, pizza prize packs from Papa John's, a $250 gift card to Miramins, and a San Francisco getaway. Um, we're um, excited to um, be able to give away these prizes here very shortly. Um, the idea was that we wanted to create some hype and excitement for those that are going out and getting vaccinated now and reward those people. With the case counts rising, um, we had to do something. And so this was a response to that. And we really want to thank the business community um, that have helped with all rounds of High Got Vaccinated and now um, our uh, special partners um, in this. All right, that was those new prizes just announced. We've written that up on your H&N digital platform, so you can see that full list there now and how to sign up, of course. The real question is, what can you do with a $400 McDonald's gift card? That's a lot of chicken McNuggets. That's exactly what I was thinking, yeah. too, and a lot of dollar sodas. <laughs> All right, meanwhile, we got a really important traffic alert to get to. This is impacting a lot of people on Oahu's east side. That's right. So the Board of Water Supply crews continue repairs on a broken water main along Kalani Anaole Highway in Kuli'o'o. Now, two lanes are closed in the westbound direction between Mo'omuku Place and East Hale Ma'uma'u Street, causing a major slowdown 
for town-bound drivers. Here's a live look with our traffic cam right now. The broken water main also caused nearby schools to close for the day. The State Department of Education said Kaiser High School and Camilo Iki Elementary School will be closed today because the schools cannot provide running water for restroom use and hand washing. The 24-inch main broke on Saturday and Board of Water Supply says customers from Kulio O Kalani Iki to Coco Head will experience lower water pressure or have no water at all. Now, multiple water wagons have been placed in the area. Separately, there's a water main break in Kaneohe that forced Heia Elementary School to close this morning. And you got caught in this mess yesterday, right? Yeah, so we were golfing in Hawaii Kai, um, and, you know, both directions were pretty bad, heading towards town and even the Waimanalo Way. Um, but yesterday, they did not have the contraflow lane open, so I hope this is helping uh, with those traffic times a little bit. And one of our good friends, more than two hours to get mm -hmm. back from that golf course, right? Yeah. Happy birthday to Ian there. That was a special <laughs> gift just for you. All right, guys, let's talk about travel. And the Delta variant really has a lot of people wondering if they should postpone their plans, especially internationally, now that Canada's reopened. We got Martha Gaither from CNN, who just filed this report about all of this. Should you stay or should you go? The Delta variant triggering changes in travel restrictions and health measures, making some travelers rethink their upcoming international trips. There are still lots of hoops to, to jump through. If you're vaccinated, if you wear a mask indoors and eat outdoors, uh, you can manage your risk uh, and make the best decision for yourself. Not long after countries in Europe, the UK and others announced reopening plans and lifted restrictions, some have had to pivot, bringing back testing requirements. Even if you're vaccinated, you still need to take a test within three days of coming back to the U.S. Uh, I do know people who have had those tests delayed. You know, uh, God forbid you test positive abroad. Uh, depending on the country, you may even need to go into a mandatory hotel quarantine. On Monday, Canada reopened its borders, allowing fully vaccinated Americans in for the first time since March 2020. Canada, they're going to be vigilant about checking those vaccines. You still have to get tested. This comes as the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention added 16 destinations to its very high COVID-19 risk level, including Greece, Ireland, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. It's kind of interesting because the CDC uh, has that level four warning for a lot of countries that actually are handling COVID a a lot better than the U.S. Meanwhile, a victory for one of the world's largest cruise lines. A judge has ruled Norwegian Cruise Line can require passengers show proof of a COVID-19 vaccination before boarding any of its ships in Florida. The Florida governor's office says they will appeal. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mandy Gaither. Thanks, Mandy. Sorry for calling you Martha a second ago. <laughs> Let's take you live outside right now. This is downtown. Our tower cam uh, right there pointed at Aloha Tower. Looking gorgeous. Yeah. And I'm pulling up the temperature right now. 84 degrees out there. And what a pleasant day. Why are we here inside this windowless room? And there's no ripples on the water, so yeah. must not be a lot of wind out That's there. That's our kind of wave action, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. You guys, let's check in with Billy V. He's in for Guy Hockey today with the very latest on all the conditions you're going to see all week long. Aloha, I'm Billy B. sitting in for Guy Hoggy. Let's take a look at your forecast. First of all, we'll start with the waves. Four to six feet, that's the biggest surf that you'll find over on the south-facing shore. And that's a swell that is on the way up. Uh, we're kind of about two to three. You'll get to about four to six by this afternoon. It will peak tomorrow and then be out on the way uh, on from Wednesday. Also, two to feet, uh, four feet over on the east-facing shores, and that's a trade wind swell there. Let's give you kind of an idea of things that are happening. First of all, on this side, in the eastern Pacific, we've got a couple of cyclones kind of storms that are happening here. They're gaining strength, but they're going to be moving up the California coastline or towards California, Baja, California. So they're not really going to affect us at this time, but we're always keeping a watch and always being prepared. In the meantime, here in the Hawaiian Islands, let's go ahead and bring you closer on in as we go move you through the forecast. Now, tomorrow, we'll get some rain showers uh, in our area. This is remnants of Jimena that's going to come through. So that's Tuesday and Wednesday. But as we move towards Thursday, the regular trade winds will start to jump in and without the trade showers, as you see Friday, Saturday and Sunday, uh, we'll pick up with some rain in the meantime. So that means your seven day forecast is looking good. Drier conditions today, more stable weather Tuesday and Wednesday, those rain showers and higher humidity. And then Thursday, another drier day like today. And then Friday, Saturday and Sunday, it's going to be nice. 
As always, get the latest on air online on your mobile device and at hawaiinews.now.com. We've confirmed several COVID cases on the set of Love Island. The reality dating series is being filmed on Hawaii Island right now. Five positive cases were reported on Friday and Saturday. ITV Entertainment, the show's production company, tells us the show is going above and beyond CDC and union guidelines. That includes testing, mask wearing, contact tracing, and quarantine protocols. The show rented out the entire Grand Naniloa Hotel in Hilo for the duration of production. It's scheduled to wrap up this coming weekend. New today, the world's leading climate change scientists have issued a stark report on the speed and impact of human-caused global warming. Roxana Sabiri has those new details. From fires like those that have been raging across Greece and Turkey, to flooding and heat waves and drought in the U.S., the U.N. report says global warming is rapidly hitting every region of the world in unprecedented ways. And it's unequivocal that we are to blame, with global carbon emissions higher than at any time in at least two million years. We are responsible for it. Yuri Rogel is a senior author of the report. How alarmed should we be? We are not yet on track, on a track, to even stop this warming from further increasing. So yes, we should be alarmed. Also alarming, the report finds that melting ice sheets and sea level rise caused by global warming are irreversible for centuries to millennia, even if we limit our emissions today. The scientists point out we've already made the world nearly two degrees hotter than pre-industrial levels. And if it warms another roughly two degrees, the upper target set by the 2015 Paris Climate Treaty, every region will feel the heat much more intensely. The scientists warned the world could get there and beyond this century unless we drastically cut our carbon, methane and other greenhouse gas emissions now. Is it too late to act? It is never too late. Every bit of warming that we can avoid will be beneficial to us. Acting together is absolutely necessary. In a global way, this challenge can really be overcome. The report was approved by every country in the world. It's sure to push governments to commit to cutting emissions faster ahead of a big UN climate summit in Scotland this fall. Roxana Saberi, CBS News, London. All right, my favorite part of the show. Let's see what the internet is talking about today. And this first story, I have a special request for my parents who are actually on the Arizona <laughs> Nevada border today. Uh -huh. And Put in my lucky numbers for Powerball oh, because yeah. it's a Monday and there's a reason why that's special today, yes. right? So Powerball is increasing your chances of becoming a millionaire. Starting August 23rd, Powerball is adding a new lottery drawing on Monday along with the current Wednesdays and Saturdays. Powerball is also introducing a new game called Double Play, which gives players more chances to win up to $10 million in a separate drawing. Now, lotto tickets for the new Monday night drawings will be sold in 45 states as well as D.C., Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. The Double Play game will be available in 13 states at first, but Powerball officials believe more will be added soon. And of course, you cannot get a Powerball ticket here in the island yeah. since we don't have a lottery but let's just imagine ashley you somehow got those lucky numbers uh -huh. you're the winner what do you do with that money besides share half of it with me oh well you know i'm house shopping so yes. that would be number one yeah. um i think in normal times travel would be number two that but... was top of my list like world yeah. travel yeah. i've always wanted to just really get out there and spend months and months mm -hmm. doing that big adventure that would that would be a good jackpot size to get us there. Yeah. Maybe. But and you know what's sad? Even if you won $10 million, right? You take off taxes, you still probably have to work. Yeah. <laughs> Which is sad to think would about. Would you not work, though? I, I'd I have like to work. Working. I would go crazy. Yeah, I, I be, like our job. I would miss you. <laughs> I really I would. You. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. And I am accounting for that allowance you're giving me. Right, so, okay. Working a little less. I'll take care of you, Jonathan. So you guys, the Olympics are done, and after being postponed after uh, a year because of the pandemic, Koi Wire tells us about the closing ceremony yesterday and what came out of these games. The closing ceremony of these Tokyo Olympics marks the end of one of the most unique, polarizing, and inspiring Olympic games ever. Sportsmanship was on full display. More than any Olympics I've covered, athletes showed respect for one another and celebrated each other. It's tough to make it to the Olympics in normal times. Amid a pandemic, 
even more so. By the time the cauldron was lit, a wide range of emotions was already burning. After all they'd been through, all the added discipline it took just to make it, athletes turned to each other, no matter the color of their uniform, and acknowledged what they'd just overcome together. And these Olympics will always be remembered for the light they shined on mental health. Simone Biles, one of the greatest athletes ever, removed herself from competing on her sport's biggest stage to prioritize her mental health over her medal count. She raged against a long ingrained culture in sport that says, barring serious injury, you keep pushing forward no matter what. There's a movement happening before our eyes. Athletes becoming advocates for mental health, having an impact far beyond just the world of sports. Simone Biles has now become one of its greatest champions. My most heartfelt reflection of these Olympics is of the host nation, Japan, and of the people of this special place. This isn't the Olympics Japan had envisioned or hoped for. It is heartbreaking because the people deserve the best circumstances to show off who they are and how they are to the world. They respect everyone and everything around them. I'm part Japanese, and the more time I've spent here and the more I've learned about my family's history, the more I love this place, this culture, and the people of Japan. I'd hoped that as competitions began, these athletes and these games could do what Olympics so often do, inspire, uplift, and unite. And that's exactly what happened. As for the athletes from Japan, they've won more gold medals than any games in which they've ever competed something of which this host nation can be so proud. Koi Wire, CNN, Tokyo. I didn't know that statistic there. Yeah. More gold medals for Japan than ever before. Mm -hmm. We were so lucky we got to host that Olympic shortcast. It really got me ingrained and into all the coverage this year. And what was your best moment? Oh, gosh. Well, I I love gymnastics, so that's that definitely cool. my favorite sport to watch, along with volleyball. And the, the whole side story, the news story that went along with that was just fascinating. It got me into so many interesting conversations with oh, friends yeah. that I never thought I would be talking about mental health with, uh -huh. right? So that really changed the Olympics in a way I never thought it would. And we cannot forget about our golden girl, Carissa Moore. Mm, and when yes. she gave that speech after returning home at the governor's office last week, you could just tell how much it meant to her. Oh, yeah. We're so proud of her. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Let's keep talking about the Olympics for just a little bit longer. But this is a really different story. <laughs> Check this out. This is from on board the International Space Station. And you can see the astronauts held their own version of the Olympics Games. I'm told they... <laughs> did something called no handball, synchronized floating, and no gravity gymnastics where I could actually handle it if there was no gravity. And they did this, and this all took place on the ISS. Like I said, NASA did not clarify if any mock gold medals were handed out to the winners of these Olympiads. And I'd have to say this, too, about the Olympics. I cannot tell you how many times I've been in the pool or in the ocean with my friends lately, and we've had our own mock olympics like oh who can do the longest handstand uh -huh. actually my friend was just staying at the hyatt and we had to do a long jump across the bed the mattress who can jump the oh furthest right like a guys. total five-year-old but we did it and that's the fun of the olympics right it lets you be a kid again Absolutely. and it really lets you enjoy those moments and just like in this world we're living in be a little bit looser have oh, a little yeah. fun oh yeah one more space story one more so nasa is looking for people to help them simulate a mission to Mars. Now, the space agency is looking for healthy, motivated, non-smoking U.S. citizens between the ages of 30 and 55. That sounds like us, Jonathan. Four-person teams will live in a 1,700-foot module for a year at the Mars Dune Alpha Modules at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. Now, participants will do science experiments, practice communications with Earth, and even simulate spacewalks. NASA hopes the lessons learned will prepare for the real-life missions to Mars. Sign us up. <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for This Is Now on this Monday. So glad to be back with yes. you at our regular time on Facebook, our digital platforms, and on KHNL. You guys, have a great one.